In this video, we'll do a curve fitting example related to an ideal gas. Charles's law states that the pressure of an ideal gas at a constant volume is linearly related to its temperature. We have some gas in the container and it's slowly heated up from 0 Celsius to 100 Celsius in 10 Celsius increments. The gas's pressure is sampled at every 10 Celsius increment. The goal is to find the best fit line for this collected data. There are a bunch of built-in MATLAB functions we can invoke to solve this problem in a matter of seconds, but I want to show you the more traditional way. Keep in mind that curve fitting is a linear algebra problem at its core. We can still form the A, X, and B matrices. Instead of using specialized regression functions, let's solve this problem from the linear algebra perspective. The first thing you should always do before attempting any kind of curve fit is to visualize the data. This will help you decide what type of fit you might want. The data from this experiment is encapsulated in the me2004 underscore charleslawdata.mat file, which you can obtain from the link in the video description. I made this .mat file so we don't have to manually copy and paste the data table from the problem statement. Let's load and plot the data so we can see what it looks like. Allow me to make some remarks about the theoretical side of curve fitting. This course is a practical introductory course meant to give you the basic tools you need to solve common engineering problems. The nature of the course unfortunately doesn't allow us to dive deeply into the theory behind many algorithms or processes. When it comes to regression, there are some conditions that must be met to properly curve fit. For example, least squares regression assumes that the y values are independent random variables with all the same variance. The data also needs to have little to no multicolinearity or no correlation between independent variables. I can continue rattling off a long list of conditions with fancy statistics buzzwords, but the point is that they're all beyond the scope of this class. In this class, we'll learn how to perform the regression. In your future classes, you'll learn the underlying statistics you need to determine if you can actually use the regression or not. It's safe to assume that all the data I give you for curve fitting problems in this class passes all the conditions needed to perform linear regression. That said, there is one check we can perform right now. One of the most basic assumptions is that the data is more or less linear. That's why plotting is so paramount. We can see that the data appears fairly linear, so fitting a straight line is appropriate. Now that we've quickly verified the appropriateness of a linear curve fit, we can form the A, X, and B matrices. If you recall slide 21 of the curve fitting theory video, we need to generate these terms to populate the A matrix. The upper left term is n, which is just the number of data points. You can also use length of p if you want, since p and t have the same size. The anti-diagonal terms represent the sum of all the independent variables. In the context of this problem, our independent variable is the temperature and the dependent variable is the pressure. I'm using the variable name Sx, which stands for the sum of the x variables. The term in the bottom right of the A matrix is the sum of the square of the x variables. Don't forget the dot preceding the caret since t is a vector. Our x vector, which I should probably call the vector of unknowns, contains the intercept and slope of the best fit line. The b vector has two terms. First is the sum of the y variables, and second is the sum of the product of the corresponding x and y variables. Now that we have all the summation terms needed to fill A and B, let's solve the system. This returns the intercept and slope of our best fit line. Keep in mind that A0 is the intercept and A1 is the slope. 
it's a good idea to append this line to our plot to see if it fits the data well. I made an anonymous function called pressure using the a0 and a1 we just computed. I then added it to the existing plot via the fplot command. It's evident that our best fit line is pretty good. We can quantify how good it is through the r squared. To compute the r squared value, we need to know two quantities, sr and st. sr is the sum of the square of the distance from each data point to the regression line, and st is the sum of the square of the distance from each data point to the mean of the data. The r squared value is the difference between st and sr normalized with respect to st. The r squared value is very close to 1, so nearly all the variability in our data can be described by our best fit line. Now that we have our best fit line, we can use it to predict the pressure of the gas at intermediate temperatures not explicitly given in the dataset. For instance, say we want to predict the pressure when T equals 55 Celsius. 55 Celsius falls between two entries within the dataset, so we can't estimate the pressure just from the dataset alone, but we can estimate it using the best fit line. Once again, we should probably plot this particular point just to make sure we did everything right. We can see that the pressure at our temperature of interest sits right in between the values of the preceding and successive data points, so we should be confident in our answer. This concludes the Charles's Law problem. Although MATLAB has many fancy and quick regression functions, sometimes it's nice to do things the old-fashioned way. You should redo this problem using one of the built-in functions to see if you can replicate the results. Also, I would save the Part B code as a standalone function M file because it's generalized to work for any linear regression problem. Now that we've covered linear regression, the next series of videos will turn to nonlinear regression and polynomial regression. We'll end the linear algebra unit with linear interpolation, which you'll probably use heavily in classes like thermodynamics. See you next time.